sorry guys, I, I I have to correct something that I said. Vertical music is actually the music that goes across. So vertical music is from human to human. Horizontal music is up and down. It goes from heaven to here or here to heaven. So when you're talking about v- vertical music, it it's from person, it's from human to human. And when you're talking about horizontal music, it's it's um from here to heaven. So that's all I wanted to correct because I was watching the movie back and I'm like, oh my god, I think I got those backwards. Yeah. Instead of secular and sacred. Because for me, secular is totally apart from God. Something that God has no uh, dealing in or whatever. That's secular to me. And when it comes to love, God has every dealing with that in every facet of it, whether it be romantic love, friendship love, and whatever. God created it. He's he's a father, but he's a friend. He created it. He designed it. And even sex in his in its right context, God created it because um it said at the end of Genesis, I believe it was three, they said um, before the fall, he said they were naked and they were not ashamed. They, they were, Adam and Eve were making love to each other and they were not ashamed. So God created sex. And in its context, in the context which he created it to be, it's totally appropriate in the marriage bed. But it's just that when you go outside of it, it creates um, problems because God has not created um, uh, sex to go outside of marriage because he knows how explosive and how wonderful sex is. So um, I've, I heard a preacher say one day, that, uh, one time this way, sex is a con- marriage is a container where sex can flourish. And um, Yes, yeah, so that's why we wait until we get married because it's so explosive and so good and so wonderful and so fulfilling that he wants us to wait because he knows how explosive and good it is. <laughs> um, so that's why he wants us to wait to experience it in all its glory and all the physicalness, all the spiritualness that comes along with it. And I think the church's mis- misrepresentation of sex um, has caused a lot of people a lot of problems. Because people in the church think sex is bad. No, it's not at all. Sex is good. Sex is so good that God says, I need to give y'all a container because if I didn't, you all would go back well because you know how, because it's because you would know how good it feels. So marriage is a container where, where sex can flourish. So, yeah, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't mean to go with sex talk, but like I said in the previous videos, it's one of my favorite subjects. It's a subject that it, it's a subject that has been misunderstood in the church for too long, and I think that's why a lot of people are struggling with it. I don't, I don't get it, because it's something that God created, but it's something that we're ashamed of. 
and the secular world talks about it like crazy. You cannot turn on the TV and not see a sex scene and like we're just so ashamed about it. But yet in our books, we don't talk about it at all. We don't even make reference to it. We don't we don't we don't talk about it and it's something that our God has created. I don't understand this. I don't understand why the secular world is so open about it and and the devil didn't create it and why some why the church is so silent and it's something that our God created beautifully. Beautifully. It's a beautiful experience. I don't understand it. See, that's one of the... Every novel, every every novel that I have written has a sex scene in it. Because I determined in myself that I am going to break this thing wide open. Um, my first novel, it's it, it's about a young man who struggles with sex. Devin struggles with sex. With sexual purity and all that. He struggles with it until he meets Jessica. And Jessica through her witness and showing him the light, light of Christ, um, introduces him to love and, and falls in love with him. And, and my, so sex is a theme there. Um, and my second book um, is a couple, the woman cheats on the man after she gets into an accident, she she falls in love with her um, with her favorite music star. They get married, they fall in love, and they but she, uh, she gets into an accident and. To and to push him away because she doesn't think that she's good enough anymore because she's now in a wheelchair. So to push him away, she starts having sex with all these different men. And my other one, well, well, the sex scene in my other one is very interesting. Um... My other one, they're they're friends for a long time. One's from Canada and one's from the U.S. And, um, like, in that one, they don't have sex on their wedding night. They they agree to wait and start, start until it, it is right for the both of them. So they they go slow and awaken uh, sex in their marriage slowly. So yeah, I'm 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 a Christian who's not afraid to talk about sex. <laughs> so because um, I know it's places I know. Sometimes it's where I still struggle, and it's where I have struggled, and it's um, where God has freed me from and gave me clarity and all that stuff. You know, it's it's so interesting. Uh, God, uh, God, uh, kind of said to me. He said, "Not no, just not now." And because sometimes when we tell tell ourselves no, 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 we suppress it. But he doesn't want us to 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 suppress it. 
He wants us to bring it to him and he'll teach us how to handle it, what, what we need to do to handle it, what we need to do to contain it until the right time comes. And I didn't go mean to go on a sex tangent, but that's what happens uh, when you put your life in the hands of the Father. So, bye guys. I'll see you soon. And another thing is when worship is properly understood, going back to worship, it's like being intimate with God. It's basically God's way of being intimate with you. So if you're, remember I said worship is a much deeper expression of praise. And when you are going into worship it's it's a much deeper thing what i didn't say and what i should have said was worship worship probably understood should leave you with something when it's over just like in the sexual experience between um between spouses, it leaves you with something, either emotionally, physically, and if it leaves you with something physically, that means something is growing inside you. And then, so if you come out from a worship service still feeling empty, that means I would argue that you haven't worshipped, you've praised, you've gotten excited, but true worship leaves something in you and that something germinates and grows inside you. So thank you for joining me today. I swear that this is my last video. Take care, guys. Bye.